we are here today to say that life is sacred. We are here today to say that if you want to talk about terror, war is terror. And the greatest terror is the terror of an unloving heart and what accomplices and goes along with the unloving heart. Racism, militarism, and blind materialism. We say what I've been taught in my faith tradition as a Muslim, that all life is sacred. And indeed, if you take a life, it is as if you have killed all of humanity. And if you save a life, it is as if you have saved all of humanity. That's what we say. We say to this president that life is sacred. Life is sacred. And for the love of God, stop this madness. Walls of empire does not make us safe. Look around us. How are we safe? By spending trillions of dollars dropping smart bombs on dumb missions while there's no jobs, no homes, education in shambles, and people living in the street. We say, stop the war, spend the money right here at home on the people. Bring our money home, bring our troops home. As a black man, and as a Muslim in America who has to worry about driving while black, and flying while Muslim, I say to this president, unlike Rush Lumbar, we don't want you to fail Obama. President Obama, we don't want you to fail, and that's why we're here. We're here to help you. We're here to help you by telling you to check yourself before you wreck yourself. We love America because we are America. justice and freedom and so we say today that we who believe in freedom cannot rest until our troops are brought home we who believe in freedom cannot rest until the tears of a palestinian mother is just as valued as the tears of an israeli mother and they all dry with compassion and justice we cannot rest we who believe in freedom cannot rest while our immigration brothers and sisters are being profiled and detained. And we who believe in freedom cannot rest while the civil rights and the civil liberties of Muslims in America are being eroded. We cannot rest. Second class citizenship for Muslims in America is not an option. And finally we say that we who believe in freedom, we will go back home. We will work together. We will pray together. We will organize together. We will come together. We will mobilize together. We will do all of that and we will demonstrate to the world that we who believe in freedom cannot rest until it comes. <laughs> Whatever you may have heard, there are a number of Iraq war veterans, Afghanistan war veterans, and military families that have put a lot on the line to stand up against this war. And I want to bring up here three of those individuals who have sacrificed and have struggled alongside of us to bring that perspective into the anti-war movement and into the broader population. From Iraq veterans against the war, I want to bring up Mathis Shiro and Robin Murray. And from military families speak out, I want to bring up Elaine Brower. Give it up for them. and I'm a member of Iraq Veterans Against the War. I am an, an Iraq war resister myself. I refused my illegal and genocidal orders in 2008. I am honored to join you here today, although very, very sad that it's yet another year that we have to be here protesting this genocide. Hi, my name is Robin Murray. I'm a former sergeant in the United States Army Reserve. Unfortunately, I wasn't a war resister. Uh, I'm a combat veteran of Baghdad and Africa. And I'm Elaine Brower. My son did three tours in what we 
call the global war on terror, which really is the global war of terror. We live in an empire, and this empire is spreading around the world, and now we have genocide in the Middle East. This is genocide. This country was built on it. I have had enough. I don't want to be up here next year to be here for eight years. What do you say we end the wars this year? You know, I, I used to think that this flag right here in my hand represented a whole lot of goodness. I was raised to believe that these stars and stripes represented freedom, represented universal brotherhood and sisterhood, that this flag represented something good and pure that our founding fathers fought and died to forge. And I don't know about that anymore. I wonder what this flag stands for exactly. Empire! It stands for empire! You know, I'm going to tell you something about this flag. When I was a young person, about 13 years old, I was in a cadet program. And I had a really good friend named Steve, and he taught me how to fold this flag. And you know, when you're 13 years old, you really don't think about what that means to you. But in 2006, when his Ranger Battalion was pulling that draped flag over his casket, I realized just what that meant. And now, it means pain and suffering to me. show you what this flag means to us right now. No more slavery, no more service, and the U.S. military furthering these genocides. We are done being servants to an unrighteous cause, and this flag is no longer my One more time, 5 EAW and Elaine Brown from that Military Family Speak Out. Yeah. Nothing else you can say. We've said a lot about speaking out against truth and power. This next sister I'm going to bring up to you is someone who stood up to some of the biggest power in this country, Michael Bloomberg. She faced off against him in the election and got the most votes of any socialist candidate in a New York City election in 20 odd years. The next sister I want to bring up who can speak for herself is Francis VR from the Party for Socialism and Liberation, straight out of the Bronx. Be So we are here today to let you know that we are 
not gonna leave until this war ends. Are you ready to march? Are you ready to march? All right, we have four more speakers or three and then we're gonna head on a march, yeah! Woo! Also, if you wanted to carry a coffin, the coffin carriers will assemble off to my right here where the march is taking off. Please welcome Brother Ibrahim Ramey with American, Society, American Muslim Society. It is America's largest Muslim grassroots organization. Assalamu alaikum. In the name of Allah, most beneficent, most merciful, I know I'm following some really powerful speech makers this afternoon, so I don't really want to duplicate what's already been said, but I do want to say one thing about why we're here. We didn't come here out of hatred of this, of this country, because so many of us believe in the values of community and the building of solidarity and the freedom that supposedly, supposedly, the United States of America is based on. But we did come here to have a very clear statement about empire and imperialism and the domination of people by economic and political and military means. I just have a couple of things to say about empire. The first observation is that no empire has ever defeated history. The Greek Empire, the Roman Empire, and for some of you maybe even if you consider this the Soviet Empire and the British Empire and now finally the US Empire confronting a set of conditions that it cannot overcome. Why? Because it cannot defeat history. History is on the side of the righteous. We understand that from the faith tradition of Islam, but also from the radical democratic tradition of resistance to evil. We understand that empire cannot win. It is historically impossible. So what we say to the brother occupying this building over here is that Regardless of your wonderful rhetoric and your cool African-American hip exterior and the, and, and the nice dresses that your wife wears that none of us could probably afford, that what we say to you is that even if you paint a nice smiley face on empire, it is still empire and it will still be defeated. And then finally, finally, what is required to defeat empire? Historically, there are two ways to do it. One way is anti-imperialist war, but the other way is disengagement, radical disengagement. When, when we look at Gandhi, what we looked at was a man and a movement that said, we will not cooperate with evil. We will not buy the products of corporations that are involved in the war system. We will not patronize the political parties and the political personalities that say nothing about the genocide in Gaza, that say nothing about the war going on that kills hundreds of thousands of people. When Brian Becker and I and other people went to Iraq in 1998, we saw in motion the mass killing of people through sanctions. Now we see in motion the mass killing of people through military means. And I understand that I need to leave now, so let me just say this. Organize, mobilize, refuse, resist. Organize, mobilize, refuse, resist. Organize, mobilize, refuse, resist. Organize, mobilize, refuse, resist. Assalamu alaikum, peace be unto you, let us win. Yeah.